Hello there, everyone. Today we're going to be reading Smile Dog. Yes, the one, the only, well, as far as I know, creepypasta of the devil dog himself. If you enjoy this kind of content, please leave a subscription and drop a like if you would so desire. In any case, without further ado, let's get started, shall we? I first met with Mary E. in the summer of 2007. I had arranged with her husband of 15 years, Terence, to see her for an interview. Mary had initially agreed, since I was not a newsman but rather an amateur writer, gathering information for a few early college assignments, and if all else went according to plan, some pieces of fiction. We scheduled the interview for a particular weekend when I was in Chicago on unrelated business, but at the last moment, Mary changed her mind and locked herself in her couple's bedroom, refusing to meet with me. For half an hour, I sat with Terrence as we camped outside the bedroom door. I listening and taking notes while he attempted to fruitlessly calm his wife. The things Mary said made little sense, but fit with the pattern I was expecting. Though I could not see her, I could tell from her voice that she was crying. And more often than not, her objections to speaking with me centered around an in incoherent diatribe on her dreams. Uh, nightmares, if you will. Terence apologized profusely when we seized this exercise, and I did my best to take it in stride. Recall that I wasn't a reporter in search of a story, but merely a curious young man in search of information. Besides, I thought at the time I could perhaps find another similar case if I put my mind and resources to it. Mary E. was the size up for a small Chicago-based bulletin board system in 1992 when she first encountered Smile JPEG and her life changed forever. She and Terrence had been married for only five months. Mary was one of an estimated 400 people who saw the image when it was posted on as a hyperlink on the BBS. Though she is the only one who has spoken openly about the experience, the rest have remained anonymous, or perhaps met an even more unpleasant fate. In 2005, when I was in only in 10th grade, Smile JPEG was first brought to my attention by my burgeoning interest in web-based phenomena. Mary was the most often cited victim of what is sometimes referred to as Smile Dog. The being Smile JPEG is reputed to display what caught my interest other than the obvious macabre elements of the cyber legend and my proliferity towards such things was the sheer lack of information. Usually to the point people don't even believe it exists, other than as a rumor or a hoax. It is unique though, because the entire phenomena centers on a picture file that is nowhere to be found on the internet. Certainly many photo manipulated simulacra litter the web, showing up at the most frequency on sites such as the image board, 4chan, and particularly the X Focus Paranormal subboard. It is suspected these are fakes because they do not have the effect the true smile JPEG is believed to have. Namely, sudden onset temporal lobe epilepsy and acute anxiety. The purported reaction in the viewer is one of the reasons the phantom-like smile JPEG is regarded with such disdain. Since it is patently absurd, though depending on whom you ask, 
the reluctance to acknowledge Smile JPEG's existence might just as much be out of fear as it is disbelief. Neither Smile JPEG nor Smile Doll mentioned anywhere on Wikipedia, though the website features articles on such other, perhaps more sa- scandalous shock sites such as Redacted. Any attempt to create a page pertaining to Smile JPEG is summarily deleted by any of the encyclopedia's many admins. Encounters with Smile JPEG are the stuff of internet legend. Mary E's story is not unique. There are unverified rumors of Smile JPEG showing up in the early days of Unsent, and even one of Persistent Tale in 2002. A hacker flooded the forums of humor and satire website, Something Awful, with a deluge of Smile Dog pictures, rendering almost half the forum's users at the time epileptic. It was also said that in the mid to late 90s that Smile Dog circulated on Unsent, and as an attachment of a chain email the subject line, Smile, God loves you. Yet despite the huge exposure these stunts would generate, there are very few people who would admit to having experienced any of them and no trace of the file or any link has ever been discovered. Those who claim to have seen Smile JPEG often weakly joke that they were far too busy to save a copy of the picture to their hard drive. However, all alleged victims offer the same description of the photo. A dog-like creature usually described as appearing similar to a Siberian husky, illuminated by the flash of the camera, sits in a dim room, only the background of the tail that is visible, being a human hand extending from the darkness near the left side of the frame. The hand is empty, but is usually described as beckoning. Of course, most attention is given to the dog, or dog creature, as some victims are more certain than others about what they claim to have seen. The muzzle of the beast is reputedly split in a wide grin, revealing two rows of very white, very straight, very sharp, very human looking teeth. This is, of course, not a description given immediately after viewing the picture, but rather a recollection of the victims, who claim to have seen the picture endlessly repeated in their mind's eye during the time they are in reality having epileptic fits. These fits are reported to continue indeterminably, often while the victims sleep, resulting in very vivid and disturbing nightmares. These may be treated with medication, though in some cases it's more effective than others. Mary E., I assume, was not on effective medication. That's why after my visit to her apartment in 2007, I sent out feelers to several folklore and urban legend oriented news groups, websites and mailing lists, hoping to find the name of a supposed victim of Smell JPEG who felt more interested in talking about his experiences. For a time, nothing happened, and at length I completely forgot about my pursuits since I had begun my freshman year of college, and was quite busy. Mary contacted me via email, however, near the beginning of March 2008. 
to so and so at so and so dot com from Mary E at so and so dot net. Subject last summer's interview. Dear Mr. L, I am incredibly sorry about my behavior last summer when you came here to interview me. I hope you understand that it was no fault of yours, but rather my own problems that led me to act out as I did. I realized that I could have handled the situation more decorously. However, I hope you will forgive me. At the time, I was afraid. You see, for 15 years, I have been haunted by Smile JPEG. Smile Dog comes to me in my sleep every night. I know that that sounds silly, but it's true. There is an ineffable quality about my dreams. My nightmares. That makes them completely unlike any real dreams I ever had. I do not move. I do not speak. I simply look ahead. And the only thing ahead of me is the scene from that horrible picture. I see the beckoning hand of the smile dog. It talks to me. It's not a dog, of course. Though I'm not quite sure what it really is. It tells me it will leave me alone. If only I do as it asks. All I must do, it says, is spread the word. That is how it phrases its demands. And I know exactly what it means. It wants me to show it to someone else. And I could. The week after my incident, I received a mail, a manila envelope, with no return address. Inside was a three and a half inch floppy disk I get. Without having to check, I knew precisely what was on it. I thought to my, for a long time about my options. I could show it to a stranger, a co-worker, I could even show it to Terence. As much as the idea disgusted me. And what would happen then? Oh, the smile dog kept its word I could sleep. Yet, if it lied, what would I do? And who was to say something worse would not come for me if I did as the creature asked? So I did nothing for 15 years, though I kept the disket hidden amongst my things. Every night for 15 years, Smile Dog has come to me in my sleep and demanded that I spread the word. For 15 years, I have stood strong. Though there have been hard times, many of my fellow victims on the BBS board, where I first encountered Smile JPEG, stopped posting. I heard some of them committed the not a lie. Others remain completely silent, simply disappearing off the face of the web. They are the ones I worry about the most. I sincerely hope you will forgive me, Mr. I, but last summer when you contacted me and my husband about an interview, I was near my breaking point. I decided I was going to give you the floppy diskette. I did not care if some elder was lying or not. I wanted it to end. You were a stranger, someone I had no connection with, and I thought I would not feel sorrow when you took the diskette as part of your research and sealed your fate. Before you arrived, I realized what I was doing. I was plotting to ruin your life. I could not stand the thought, and in fact I still could not. I am ashamed of it, Mr. I and I hope that this warning will dissuade you from further investigation of Smile JPEG. You may in time encounter someone who is, if not weaker than I, then wholly more depraved. Someone who will not hesitate to follow Smile Dog's orders. Stop while you still hold. Sincerely, Mrs. E. Terence contacted me later that month with the news that his wife had offed herself. While cleaning up the various things she'd left behind, 
closing emails, accounts, and the like, he happened upon the above message. He was a man in shambles. He wept as he told me to listen to his wife's advice. He had found the diskette, he revealed, and burned it until it was nothing but a stinking pile of blackened plastic. The part that most disturbed him, however, was how the diskette had hissed at him like as it melted. Like some sort of animal, he said. I will admit that I was a little uncertain about how to respond to all this. I thought perhaps it was a joke. With the couple bla belatedly playing upon the situation? In order to get a rise out of me? Perhaps. So I checked the several Chicago's newspapers. Online obituaries, however, proved that Mary E. was indeed dead. There was, of course, no mention of suicide in the article. I decided that for a time, at least, I would not further pursue the subject of Smile JPEG, especially since I had finals coming up at the end of May. But the world has odd ways of testing us. Almost a full year after I'd returned from my disastrous interview with Mary E, I received yet another email. To JML at so and so dot com from Ehaza82 at so and so dot com. Subject Smile. Hello, I found your email address through a mailing list that your profile said you were interested in Smile Dog. I have seen it. It is not as bad as everyone says. I have sent it to you here, just spreading the word. Smile face. That final line chilled me to the bone. According to my email client, there was one file attachment naturally called SmileJPEG. I considered downloading it for some time. It was most likely a fake. I imagined and even if it weren't, I was never wholly convinced of SmileJPEG's peculiar powers. Mary E's account had shaken me, yes. But she was probably mentally unbalanced anyway. After all, how could a simple image do what the Smile JPEG was said to accomplish? What sort of creature was it that could break one's mind with only the power of the eye? And if such things were patently absurd, then why did the legend exist at all? If I downloaded the image, if I looked at it, and if Mary turned out to be correct, if Smile Dog came to me in my dreams, demanding I spread the word, what would I do? Would I live my life as Mary had, fighting against the urge to give in until I died? Or would I simply spread the word, eager to be put to rest? And if I chose the latter route, how could I do it? Whom would I burden it with? If I went through with my earlier intention to write a short article about Smile JPEG, I decided I could attach it as evidence, and anyone who reads the article, anyone who took interest will be affected. And even assuming the smell JPEG attached to the email was genuine, uh, would I be capricious enough to save myself in that manner? Could I spread the word? Yes, yes I could. <laughs> <laughs>